Hello Divas, Dudes and Dolls, I'm Kira Couture, and welcome back to my flashy, fantastical, and final little review show, Very Slay, where we go over each and every look on the main stage of Drag Race Belgique Season 2. Like I said before, we're in hotels this for this week of episodes, so you'll just have to deal with it. And if my makeup looks a little bit questionable, it doesn't. I haven't been in drag for 11 plus hours at this point, watching the show and walking around the con floor all day. Pax was very, very fun for day one, very, very busy, but I got a lot of cute pictures out of this look and um, be sure to go check out on Instagram just so you can see like me out and about. I ran into an Aerith cosplayer, which was a very, very cute since I was Tifa from Final Fantasy VII today. So I thought, we'll just stay in this. Now, it is the final episode of Belgique season two. You know, so sad it's over, but also um, I'm very excited to have my burden lightened in terms of editing each week. So another season on the books, done, taken care of and we're moving on to the next thing. For anyone who is new to the channel, who has never seen the show, doesn't know the normal format, obviously this is not my normal setup. And if I think look is just middle of the road, gets the job done, but isn't anything to write home about, we give it an okay. If I love it and think it's fantastic, we give it a slow. And if I don't like it for any reason, we give it an A. As since this was the final episode of the season, all nine of the contestants came back and we got to see their drag excellence look. So very classic, typical drag race finale where we get to see everybody's final runway. I love these because I love getting to see these gowns, these looks, the full spectacle of it all and seeing everybody at their top, top caliber of what they do. So with that said, let's get into all of these looks, shall we? I am gonna move myself over here for the frame just so that way we can have the pictures come in nice and it will be cute and very easy to work with. Alrighty, first up we have Sarah Logan. And this is very quintessential for what I would think for her because of her being more of a cabaret girl. I love the color palette. I love the pink and the purple together. That being said, that's about all I like about this. I just don't like the cut. I think it's more impactful when the pop-up is raised. That was kind of a saving factor for me. And with how it hits on the skirt, it's a weird spot. She almost looks a bit like a feather duster and not like a fun feather duster. So just, not my personal favorite. The hair's fine. I think it's a good silhouette on her. I like how elevated it is. Just not really my taste. It's not my preference. So I think I'm gonna give it a A. Up next, we have Madame Yoko. I actually really like this. I love the fringe element of this. I think the kind of the gold chaining is really cute. Really, really nice. I love the hair. I love the slick back pony moment. And I think hers is more successful than Sarah's. Just in terms of the scale and the silhouette, it's a little sleeker. I like the blue tips at the end of this and how that kind of translates into the blue feathers of the skirt. I think that looks really nice in general. And I like this little rooster headpiece. I think that's quite fun. So I'm gonna give this a slide. Next up, we have Morphe. And initially, I loved this because I loved the butterfly in the mouth, very Silence of the Lambs, that kind of vibe. Love her makeup here. And I love this straight jacket gown. I think that's a really cool idea. And I love that the buckles aren't lined up. They're kind of mismatched across the whole silhouette. I, I do see the point of this gown. I do see the intention of the reveal into the bodysuit with the heelless heel, which I'm always a fan of, with this kind of like maroon metallic viscera bodysuit. Very alien, very weird kind of sci-fi. But the hair, I, I can't do the hair like it's if there's one thing that I historically do not like about Morphe it's her wigs as much as I love her I just don't think that the hair choice is good I think she could have just done like a short little slick back moment and that would have been fine the hair takes it down quite a bit I'm just gonna give this an okay next up we have Star now this color palette of this peacock look on her is stunning I love the green and the blue jewel tones against her. She's really good skin tone for it. I actually really love this hairstyle too. Really sleek, really sophisticated. Again, like Sarah's, I didn't think the pop-up really added anything to it. I do think Sarah's pop-up was more effective than Star's was. I think the dress alone on Star's is still pretty good. You know what, generally it's not my favorite and I think that's more of a taste preferential thing. I'm just gonna give this an okay. Up next we have Chloe Clark and this look I adore. This is very evil queen. This is very also dominatrixy, which I think is quite fun. I love the spike pieces on the shoulders, but I also love that it's carried out throughout the hair and that it's not a headpiece. Like this is just the way the hair is sculpted into this like straight up point. Her makeup looks great as always. Again, she's one of my favorite faces in this competition. 
I really loved the silhouette with the skirt before she took it off. I didn't think that she needed to remove it. I thought it looked fine with it. Had she been in the finale? Had she been in the lip sync smackdown for the crown? I think that would have been a smart choice to have so she could have removed it and been a bit more mobile. But I think in general, both looks with the skirt and without are still really good. I just prefer it with the gown because I think it's a little bit more dramatic, a little bit more fitting of a finale. So either way, I'm giving her a slide. Should we be surprised? No. Then we have our first part of our top four. We have Gabbana in this lovely little black gown with these lightning bolt elements. I do really love that it's a callback to the first runway of the season with the rain theme. And seeing her at the end of the finals and a look that calls back to that, I think is really cute, really fierce. I didn't really like the silhouette of it at first. I thought the, the little puffy bit at the top of the skirt was a bit unnecessary. But looking at it here in the still image, it does very much give like rain cloud vibes. And she's, you know, the dark thunder cloud coming overhead. And there's a lot of like lighter elements with the skirt, especially just with the layering and the fabric choices. So I like that a lot. Her makeup is incredible as always. She's always stamped. I'm always a fan of her mug as well. I love the gold detailing, the gold loose glitter and the cheek highlight. I was a fan of that. Thought it looked really nice, really clean. And I think her hairstyle, while it's very similar to Sarah's, I think hers is more successful. I think ultimately it's a strong look. Is it my favorite look? No, because I, I don't personally like the silhouette of this all that much. I think it was more effective without the fabric around the little shoulder area thing, which took that off in the lip sync. I thought it looked better, it looked a little sleeker. And even when the skirt came off of this and it was just kind of like the leotard corset and the tights, I have to say, I have a huge amount of appreciation for the fact that the lining on the tights that's stone, it sinks up and goes into the line design on the corset. It just looked really good on stage. So like, that's a smart detail and I love a smart detail. So I think for those reasons alone, even though this look is not necessarily my favorite of the episode by any means, I'm still gonna give it a slight. It's still pretty good. Next up, we have Lulu Velvet in this black and white hound's tooth situation. What blows my mind about this is that this is crocheted. Like, crocheted hound's tooth, even. That's wild to me. And I think what I love about this look too, so hers is also a tearaway into a leotard, but when I look at this, I would never expect it. With Gabbana's, I looked at it and thought, there's probably going to be a tearaway element to this. There's probably going to be a skirt that comes off at some point. Work. You do. You. I never would have gotten it out of this, just looking at it. I think having it all black, having it all the same fabric, really allows that to kind of be hidden a bit better. And it leads into more of a seamless reveal, which I think with Lulu being a burlesque girl, makes a lot of sense. I love this hair on her. I love the silver eye. Her makeup is always really good too. Um, this is my favorite look that she's worn in the competition and she's had a lot of really strong looks. So this is a great look to go out on and I'm giving you a slight, obviously. Next up we have Lavove, my pick for the win. I'm so sad that she didn't get it. She had an incredible run and I love the look she went out on. I think it's very quintessential her. It's campy, it's goofy. I love this hair. I love the sculptural detailing in this. I love the height, I love the proportion of it, but even just like the little swirls throughout the hair, there's a really organic sense to it at the same time, which I think is what makes it successful because a lot of the times these really sculptural wigs, they look really crunchy, really plasticky, and I don't like that, but this works for me. I love her aesthetic, I love her makeup, I love how exaggerated it is. Normally I'm not a really big fan of like really high campy eyebrows where they're like, going up a little bit higher than where you would normally place a lifted brow, but I think her placement is perfect. It fits her facial proportions really well, and not a lot of people can pull off a paint like this, so props to her for doing the thing. Now, getting into this look, I love that it's a gown that's still very elegant and very kind of Regency at times, but it's fetish wear. I just think that's really fun. And again, a callback to an earlier look we saw from her, her entrance look. I have never seen like a ruffle like this out of latex before. If I have, it wasn't done in a memorable way. So I love this. I think she looks great in red. And just, I really like the way it moved. And again, it had that kind of sense of fluidity and lightness to it. So it, it looked really great on the runway. It's draped really well. I'm gonna give it a slide. And finally, 
we have our newly crowned queen, we have Almeida. This, this was such a wow moment on the runway and she's so little compared to a lot of these other queens in terms of height. So having the feathers along the underside of the wig to come up around the side of her head to have that elevation, so smart, so good. I love the headpiece with the veil attached to it. Her makeup has really truly become one of my favorite Drag Race faces over this season because it's so heavy. It's so severe in terms of how strong the blush is. It's such a 1980s thing. And I really love the accessories in this. I love all the clips and the hair, all the little detail things that are inside the wig too, like the little keys. And then on top of that, the keys that are on the blush and just like that motif running through the look, really, really smart. Getting into the garment itself, I love the silhouette. I love the cut of it. Yes, it's a bodysuit when we get into it in terms of like structural things, but it's done in a really smart way. It's done really interestingly. It's these really tiny little intentional choices that I love about it. And ultimately, I think my favorite thing about this entire look is how it looked from behind. Right? The drape on the skirt and this little piece that attaches up at the top is so elegant. It's so different and it kind of goes back to some of these earlier looks I've seen from Elvia. It kind of gave me like sci-fi vibes and I think this really fits that too. So of course, I'd be dumb to give this anything but a slay. Okay, and that's all of the looks. So it's now time to pick our slay of the day, my favorite look of the episode, which will be the final look going into our slay of the season video that will be coming probably in the next couple of weeks. I just have to get everything assembled for that. My favorite look of the week, my slay of the day, I think is going to have to go to Alvita. Like this was such a strong look to go out on. And I think she's a very, very deserving winner. Even though I was personally still really rooting for Laveau, I am very happy with either of them taking the crown. I really genuinely love this top four a lot. This was my first season watching Belgique and I know there's definitely been some like weird editing things. Like for example, the fact that they kept it in the edit, Rita getting up to leave the panel at the end of the episode. It was like a bit of an oversight to leave that in, but I also thought it was very funny that it was stayed in the episode and it very much tickled me. That's gonna be it for me today. I know this is kind of like a weird format for the video. I'm mostly just trying to figure out how this is all gonna work in terms of like filming it and structure and all of that jazz. So after this, we'll be back with the green screen, the normal setup. We've got two Slay of the Season videos coming shortly after all of these come out. I know this is like a much later upload in the week from when I normally would have done them. Didn't have a way to add it. So this is what you get. Hopefully it works and doesn't sound like shit. So there, that's gonna be it for me today. I can't wait to let my skin breathe and get out of drag because I have to get up even earlier tomorrow. Until we meet again, y'all, be sure to go out there, stay kind, stay queer, and make sure that your day is very slay.